So hi there, and welcome to the uh, Big Irish vlog of July 20th. It's been a while. New background. New everything, really. New hat. Yay. Thank you, Sean and Alan. True Panama style. Some Irish bling on the wall. Just some stuff. We're still getting settled. So, uh, greetings from the Raven's Nest. Been a while, and uh, there's a lot of huge things. This is going to be a big one, folks. So, settle in. I got a lot to share. Uh, we're in Denver. Yay, we're in Denver. Really enjoying it here. Uh, we're in North Glen specifically. Uh, we've been here since Tuesday. It's Sunday, so not quite a full week, but uh, the trip went really well. Uh, we had an amazing support uh, on both ends to get here. I'll get into that a little bit more later about the GoFundMe and all that, but just thank you to everyone uh, who was there uh, to help us. Uh, just an amazing time. Uh, I got a chance to socialize and, and meet some really incredible folks, get some really cool gaming in uh, this weekend. Um, had a great time with Marie and her crew last night in our Out in the Black game over at Crypt Castle. Cool store. Uh, cool, cool environment, cool game, cool times. Uh, so we got to just play Savage, uh, Serenity Firefly setting. And then today I got to hang out with uh, a bunch of really cool people uh, that were looking to get some cool gaming in. And some painting party stuff going on. So nice barbecue, uh, great times. So thanks to Jake and Stacy. And uh, it was great meeting uh, back up with Bill Keys, the evil bunny, and his lovely and wonderful wife, Tammy, and their daughters. And uh, it was just good times. Uh, and Luke, wow. Uh, there's going to be a gamer's tavern coming up in the near future where our friend Luke gets to talk about gamers and gaming, you know, gamer health. Uh, and he's a guy who, who topped out at 400 pounds, and he looks amazing today. He's got some really great advice, fantastic advice for anybody who is looking to make themselves healthy again. But he does come from it from a, a geek and gamer perspective. So anyway, all that's coming up, and uh, you'll keep an eye on the Gamers Tavern. Uh, so, first important piece of information to get into is that the any awards are open for voting. Um, so, link. As always, down below. And uh, wow, Shintar Legends Arise and Shintar Legends Unleashed are both nominated. Legends Arise is up for Best Rules. Let me tell you something. I am pretty flipped out about that. I'm looking up on the list, and uh, I'm up against uh, 13, for, 13 Age from Pelgrane Press. Wow, I mean, that's hot. Uh, the Fake Core System from Evil Hat. Brilliant stuff. Hill Folk. Uh, Robin D. Laws. I mean, me and Robin D. Laws and the same thing? Yeah, I'm really, it is an amazing honor just to be on that list, whether I win anything or not. Uh, and then Tremulous, the, the fantastic stuff that Sean Preston uh, finally pulled out there for Reality Blurs, based on the Apocalyptic Warrior, uh, Apocalypse, Apocalypse World engine. So, yeah, there's that. And then for Best Electronic Book, Shintar Legends Unleashed. Uh, so really thrilled about that. We're up against the fellow savages of, uh, of uh, the Broken Earth setting uh, from Sneak Attack Press. Uh, Corporea from uh, Brabblemart Press. Uh, that's a modern day knights come alive in the corporate world kind of thing. Uh, the Fairy Tales from the Unlit Shores with Prince Charming the Reanimator from Purple Duck Games and Four Winds Fantasy Gaming. It's a, it's a joint venture there. And uh, Player's Guide to Emerald City from Green Ronin. Emerald City is a really cool stuff. Oh, so, again, fantastic products to be uh, on the same list with. So, wow, just exciting stuff. Uh, Evil Beagle Games is actually on the list for fan favorite publisher, too. So, extra bonus and extra really cool. Uh, our friends over at Pinnacle have Deadlands Noir up for Best Art Interior, Best Cartography for the New Orleans and Texaco Maps. Best setting and uh, for the companion for New, uh, Deadlands Noir, best supplement. And New Deadlands Noir is also up for product of the year. And uh, then Octon Cthulhu, Keeper's Guide to the Secret War, another savage thing, is up for best art cover. So there's for our, our fellow savage fans uh, and their stuff out there. So I'll go ahead and say this. Uh, it's a dream come true just being nominated. I mean... Really amazing honor. I don't say that lightly. It, just being on that list in, the, in that company. Uh, specifically, I got to say, as a writer and as a game designer, 
And having my game design talent recognized for best rules is a huge boost. Uh, it's, it's truly an honor to know that the, the stuff I've added to the Savage Worlds community and Melu is, is considered worthy of that recognition. So thank you to the judges for, for that incredible honor. Um, I will say, if you love Shantar, uh, certainly I'm going to appreciate your votes. So do hit that link. And, uh, and even if it's, whether it's Shantar or any of the products and companies, if you have a new love for any of them, get on there and vote. This is an important thing. The awards are uh, both a matter of, of solid, wonderful people who know their business bringing forth the nominations, but then it's the fans who determine who walks away with the gold and the silver. And that's you guys. So get on that, that link and make your votes known and let, uh, let the world know what you, you think is awesome. Because when we walk up to that stage, if, we, if, if I get to or if anybody else gets to, it's because you decided, uh, you and others decided that, that our efforts were worthy of your additional support in saying, yes, I want this product recognized. And uh, we, we all, every publisher there is, from the top guys at Wizards of the Coast and, and Paizo right down to, to a guy like me, who's just a you know, little company uh, working from the home office here with the beige walls. We all appreciate that, and it, it, it's incredible, and incredibly important to us to know that you value our efforts uh, enough to go and vote. So please do. As they opened up today, and uh, you know, there's only a few days, so get on it, vote, get the word out. All right, so today is the anniversary of one year since we got the full funding for the Shintar Kickstarter, uh, Shintar Kickstarter. And I'm going to say it's bittersweet uh, due to all that should have been done by now. But there has been a lot done, so I'm going to go through as an update for everyone uh, what we've got done and what still is to be done. So we got to the two core books out done and delivered. To the best of my knowledge, everyone has gotten what they're supposed to, um, you know, knocking on wood. Uh, if there's still a problem, as always, you let me know directly and I'll see to it that we're getting it handled. But as far as I know, everybody's gotten their PDFs and or their physical copies. Um, I have not yet begun my run to the Roll20 stuff. Uh, one of my goals is to finally get set up and to run games on a semi-regular basis and to do so very soon now that we are finally moved. Uh, I am developing some ideas about an approach that's going to allow for different books to operate from the same area going on different missions. That way I can have a rotating cast of people in uh, as I get on at different times to run. Uh, the villages, cities, kingdoms, and the like have all been integrated into the new upcoming map that is being worked on by the amazing Alita Saxon. Alita, I know I've got a, you've got some stuff in my inbox I've got to touch and deal with uh, getting back to work. Uh, ASAP here, so I'll get that. I'll get on that to you. But she's doing an amazing job with a new map that's integrating all the the user created content. Uh, and I'm also going to be targeting where they go in the various books. And they did promise as people added stuff like that and the bloodlines as well that they will come out in one book or another as we go forward. So I'm, I'm still working through where all that stuff's going to get uh, uh, described and, and included. Uh, the guidebooks and the Black Lantern reports are still way behind. We all know this. Um, I've got something new to reveal uh, on that, uh, which I'll be talking about a little bit later. I will point out that uh, I do have manuscripts from Eddie Webb for the Malcar Dominion and Phil Vecchione for the Gawanesh, and uh, all the delays at this point are my fault, not theirs. Um, I've got to say the big personal thank yous are being integrated into a special project called Dramatis Heroica. I talked about this before. I'm just bringing it up again. And none other than our dear friend Al Bear, who's finally back from his hiatus, uh, having to work on some other stuff in, in, uh, in the real world. He's back to get back on board, and he's scheduled to help me whip that into shape. And Corinne is even now setting up our space to begin with her part of the project, which is all those kit-bashed uh, minis and uh, customized painted minis for, for all the people who uh, are looking for that. So that is uh, in the works, and, and again, with Al Bear kind of coming back to us and getting back involved with the flock, uh, that project uh, is, is going to start going forward again. The Burning Heart Adventure, which is one of the bonus goals, uh, is waiting in the wings for me to pull together in a solid release form. It's just one of many things I have set aside and need to put my hands back onto again. But it's going to get into a schedule along with everything else. Like I said, stay tuned. Some interesting information there. Um, at Greenwood's Serenity, City of Secrets, it remains on the table. He's just waiting for me to confer with him uh, and getting it started. And again, with the big news coming up, I anticipate some new movement there very soon. The Godstrike Tempest still needs me and Miles to get our hands into it, but a lot of groundwork has been laid for that one, as anyone who's been playing the Shantar Justice and Life campaign already knows. 
So there's there's a lot of material and concepts there that just need to get written and, and put into release form. The six times epic scenarios did get completed and released, so that's a victory. Yay. The mythical there's bonus goal is still in development as those folks have had their own uh, share of bumpy roads. The scenario to go with it, however, has been long done and out. So if anyone's supposed to get that, let me know. I think that got out there for his hands, and now we're just waiting for the actual physical thing to get done on their end and delivered. Uh, okay, the Accursed Crossover Adventure uh, is being currently finished up by John Dunn over at Melior Via. I did the Guns of Daggerov, uh, which has has been released to uh, Accursed fans, and that has a Shintar thing in it. So if you don't, if you haven't gotten your hands on Guns of Daggerov, you might want to, because there's a there is a shine tower reference in there. So anyway, uh, but the actual crossover adventure coming from uh, the accursed lands into shine tower that specifically, as I said, it's in the works. Uh, I've seen a, a treatment for the cover; it's amazing. So that is in development and, and being completed. The shine tower adventure cards are completed, done, delivered, and they are now available also in uh, down and print on demand from uh, drive through uh, RBG and drive through cards. Aries Vito and I uh, recently had a chat, and he's still very excited about doing the Even Lord Severance's service supplement. Uh, so we're hoping to put some hands on that and, and get that into the schedule soon as well. The Pirate Press guys have finally gotten Battle for Oz done, and are in the final stages of getting that out to everyone. And uh, I should free them up to start working on some uh, crossover scenario work uh, that was promised soon. Steve Long has already turned in his manuscript for the Shine Tar Tales novellas, which I still just I've got to actually I need to get that into Corinne's hands and have her go ahead and start working on the editing on that one. Uh, and the other three uh, authors, Aaron Rosenberg, Dan McGirt, Scott Corum, I've got to go ahead and and we have I don't say we for a reason. I've got to get in touch with them and uh, get that worked out to get them developed for release. The Frank's Rangers bonus goal thing that developed right there at the end of the Kickstarter, where I'm I'm writing a unique adventure for him, and there's two other backers, a guy named David and uh, J.R. Uh, Tyner, uh, and they had agreed to have those shared out with everyone else, not just you know, originally the thing was it was sort of unique to them and their group, but they actually wanted to go ahead and share it. I'm actually planning on turning that into a uh, uh, epic story arc that connects their personal desires and ideas, but somehow ties into something that all three of those adventures uh, are connected by. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to release it that way so that it'll get out to everybody. So um, that's going to be, I think it's going to be fun. And we'll have that, uh, you know, again, along with everything else, put into the schedule. So that should cover all the Kickstarter goals and bonus stuff. As I said, there's a lot that remains too far behind, and it's been a full year since we funded which is why I've taken a pretty major step towards fixing the problems with Eagle Beagle Games. Uh, Melio Vaya, talked about them, John Dunn. They have done a fantastic job delivering on all of their Kickstarter stuff from their cursed Kickstarter. They are a model to follow. And therefore, I'm pretty excited that I have one of the, the people involved in that model of getting it done as a partner now, Ross Watson. Uh, he's joining Evil Beagle. Uh, he'll be taking the role of managing director for the company. Ross has extensive experience with product development management, as well as being an exceptionally talented writer and designer in his own right. Uh, I'm turning over the management of things to him because, let's face it, we all know I no, that's just not. I'm, I didn't get it done, folks, did I? No. So someone who can manage that kind of thing is is you know, cracking the whip like Corinne just said over there. Uh, so I'm turning that over to him, and he'll be seeing to get my ducks in a row, and the project is done and delivered. Check out the link uh, to find out more about him. I mean, anybody knows anything about Dark Heresy? He was heavily involved in the whole Warhammer 40k universe stuff. The Fantasy Flight was also a fellow writer with me on the new Star Wars stuff. Um, you know, Ross has been at this for a while, and he, uh, he's got a, a lot of fantastic experience. He is our, our, our roommate here at the Raymond's Nest, so we are all going to be working personally and closely together. Uh, so this isn't just a matter of him from, from afar sending me emails screaming at me. No, he can walk right down the hall and yell right in my face. Um, and, and I'm going to be turning it over to him. I'm going to be trusting in him to give me schedules and deadlines. And I'm going to be, you know, the talent under his direction uh, as it needs to be right now. Because uh, that's, that's he's, he's going to help me get it figured out. As I say, he's also going to help me get some other stuff developed. He's also going to be helpful in expanding Evil Beagle's overall production and publishing schedule with new products and new talent 
making those products happen. So we're going to be expanding our overall uh, business model. And uh, at the same time, Corinne is formally being instituted as a third partner in our LLC and as a founder, just like I am. She's also our editor-in-chief. And she'll be ensuring that everything is as right as we can make it before it goes out the door. So uh, as a partner in Evil Beagle and as well as uh, the accuratist in all ways, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, having her hand in, in what we're doing. So the three of us uh, will be uh, making a more formal press release oriented kind of thing in the future. But I wanted all of you who've been following along uh, and who are fans of the of Shine Tar to know that real and serious and genuine steps are being taken to get it done, to get the books done, to get the product schedule into actual product schedule form, and, and a concerted, realistic business approach that sees to it that your promises are fulfilled to you. So there you go. We're still very much in partnership with Savage Mojo from the production development side of things and the art and the layout and all that. But, but at the same time, with Ross's expertise, is, uh, that includes the ability to, as we release other products and, pre and, and, and things like that, Ross can see to it that we have the mobility and the, the, the facility to, to, to do layout and, and to put the art in the books and just get it all done in, in a way that, that I've not been able to. Uh, I don't even know what my title is going to be yet. So you have to wait till I guess, next week when we do a more formal press release announcement. Uh, I don't know, probably just still Chief Kibler, maybe, I, whatever. We'll figure it out, but anyway, I just, like I said, the formal announcements will come, there'll be press information and all that kind of stuff, but I just, I, it seemed to me that those of you who've been along for the ride for a while need to know that now. The anniversary seemed a good time to mark the dramatic and important changes that we are making to ensure that the Evil Beagle does actually step up to its obligations and to the next level what it's, put, you know, what it's capable of. Uh, the GoFundMe campaign. Let me just go ahead and cover that real quick. We'll probably have that wrapped up. We'll probably, you know, take it down, I should say, by the end of this month. But I really want to say that Ross, Corinne, Sammy, Raya, and I are all incredibly grateful to those who contributed to making our dreams for moving here uh, into Denver come true. It's already been an exceptionally fantastic experience. An army of amazing people came through for us on both ends, uh, helping with the loading and the unloading. And we're getting settled into the Raven's Nest uh, very nicely. Uh, we'll be going through the reward stuff uh, starting next week, contacting everyone to arrange delivery of what was promised. Uh, we will likely take the GoFundMe down, like I said, at the end of the month, and we want to, again, want to thank everyone for your incredible support of this dream. Uh, and in the text thing, it just says final words. So here's my final words. Thank you. You guys are amazing. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your understanding. Uh, you've been following along for a while, you know. Uh, the, dream, the dream of our move to Denver had some very realistic, uh, very real uh, consequences at stake, including my getting a chance to get health care. And so with those who supported me saying, go get health care uh, tomorrow, one of my first jobs, one of my first tasks that I intend to undertake, is getting a hold of the local people who handle uh, Medicaid uh, and getting signed up and, and getting the chance to go see a doctor as soon as possible. So that's happening. Uh, and that, of course, will have a, go a long way towards my, increasing my productivity because I have health care and pain relief and all kinds of cool stuff like that. But uh, regardless, work's going to get done. Ross is going to take this puppy and jog it and get it in shape, get it healthy, and uh, make it a really cool, productive thing. And again, I should say we've already been talking to some amazingly talented human beings. I'm not going to get into anything specific, but I will tell you uh, the future is incredibly bright in terms of what we can do as a company, the talent that we can access, other dreams that can be fulfilled by other creative people. Uh, it's really cool stuff's going to be happening out of this house. So thank you again. Uh, as always, I welcome your support. I, uh, well, I, of course, I welcome your support. I welcome your questions. I welcome your comments, uh, whether it's on the YouTube or drop me a line on Facebook or drop me a line on G+. Uh, or just put a comment in the Sean Figure of the Day uh, thing, if that's where you're catching this. Wherever it is, drop me a line or hit me up at, uh, uh, well, hit us up at evilbeaglegames at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Really excited about this. We're heading up on the 20 minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and call it as usual. Keep the dice rolling, and peace out. <laughs>